So it was very interesting when, De <laughs> when Delaney sent me this. <clears throat> I read the lyrics and I was looking for a different word than joint. <laughs> but the song is called Follow Your Ever Wherever It Points. So it would have to be a word that, didn't, that rhymed with point. And then I realized how old I had become. <laughs> that that is such a horrible word to say. Um, and I just said, you know what? It's gonna land where it lands and do what it does. So, um, so I just thought, you know, why should I rewrite something when you know, the, the country has already turned marijuana into alcohol, frankly. So, um, so, and it's not about any of that. The point of this song truly is following what's in you to follow. Following your heart. So. Follow your arrow wherever it points. So metaphysically speaking, what is the arrow? So what's the arrow in that song? Follow your arrow wherever it points. This, this is gonna be a great lesson to learn today, almost like I'm teaching science of mind. But let's start with what is, almost like I'm doing science of mind. Um, I meant almost like I'm teaching. I'm always doing science of mind. I really can't go anywhere without it applying to this teaching. So, so what is the arrow? Obviously what it is, is there's something in you that is driving you. Now the truth is it's you. There is that which is behind you. There is the oversoul, as Emerson calls it. There is that, that divine energy that is everywhere present, that, that life force that is always pushing us, nudging us. How many here has ever felt that nudge when something's just pushing you saying, there's more? Where have the rest of you been? Every one of us at some point in our lives, we may not even know it or understand that that's what it is, but there is something inside of you that is just pushing against you. So following it is the trick. Can you follow what you are being led to do? So follow your arrow. So on the heels of last week's, you know, be your authentic self, there's a line in this song that says, just because you can't beat them, don't mean you should join them, right? Just because you can't beat them, don't mean you should join them. In this world that we live in, it's very easy to suddenly become in relationship to things we don't want to be in relationship with. Politics, health scares, all sorts of things. Age differences, you know, gender differences, sexual preference differences. There's so many differences. And it's so easy to become in relationship to that. And yet, that's not our authentic self. Just because you can't beat them don't mean you should join them. Our job as religious scientists, as, as any form of new thought, is to stay in a level of consciousness that allows us to be in relationship to everything from there. So I had something happen this week. You know, I know that most of you think I probably just get tons of adulation all week from people. What a lovely talk. Oh, you're so helpful to me. And, and it's true. I do get, I get, and so many people are so gracious and loving and, and to me. But there are the occasional people who send me things that are not very friendly and not very nice. And in, my, in the history of being here for a year now, I've only gotten two emails that were hate mails. No, really, really, really vehement, very negative, mean, emails. And please don't feel sorry for me. I'm not a victim. If it came to me, I drew it. I'm aware of that. So last week, I got one, but here's the funny part. Not that it was very funny, but here's the funny part. <laughs> the topic, the title of the email was, you've done it again. And I was like, oh, it's another email telling me the talk worked for them. And I was like, oh, this will be nice. Someone's telling me I've done it again. I showed up on a Sunday and we've all had a great time. No. No, it was more, uh, you've done it again, you bloom, 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 things I can't say from this, you know. And it was all because last week, and I did want to bring this up for this reason, because of a, a sentence I said about Toastmasters uh, was taken out of context of my entire talk. So because I said, you can take Toastmasters till you're blue in the face, but if you're not authentic, it's just going to make you more of an authentic person on stage, which I stand behind still. Um, but I didn't mean to say Toastmasters was, was awful, or, and this person obviously went to Toastmasters. And so what he did was he took that little snippet and took it to a Toastmasters meeting, 
and played it, which got a lot of people angry. And so they, he sent me an email back with their emails attached, sent back to him. And so I sat with it and I was like, wow, who would think that 30 seconds of a 25-minute talk could stir so much trouble? Now, Michelle Obama always says, when we go low, they go high. No. <laughs> when they go low, we go high. And I'm thinking about that, and I was like, no, that's not for me. It's, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, right back, no. So I was like, when they go low, I go deep, because I need to go find out what's going on. And I'm only bringing this story up not to, not to tell you about this email, but to get, just because you can't beat them doesn't mean you should join them. How many times have you been, well, acted out upon? How many times has someone let their venom out on you, rightfully or unrightfully? Well, it's always rightfully because if you're there and it's happening, something in you brought that forward. So what I decided to do was just write an email back and take my own life in my own hands and say, uh, my door is always open. You can speak to me about anything you ever want, but I will never, ever hear from you again by email because I don't do emails where people can just hide behind words and never tell you to your face. So he went to spam. I'll never hear from him again. Um, but every other person on that email, I wrote back to, <clears throat> to all of them. And what was lovely about this was that every person that I wrote back to, wrote back to me, thanked me. Uh, one of them actually went and watched the whole talk which is what I asked them to do. I said, maybe you should watch the whole talk and not just the 30 seconds of me saying what I said about Toastmasters because Toastmasters is very helpful. If you are authentic and you get how to speak from your heart, go to Toastmasters. You'll stop saying, um. <laughs> which drives me crazy. Um. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was by accident. I did not do that on purpose. So... It was really wonderful to get those back, and I went, so what, what's, what's here? Well, what's here is what this song says. If you stay in your truth, nothing can derail you. But if you act out against what's coming towards you with the same energy where it's coming from, you are now derailed, and you're out here. You've now joined them. You're not staying in your truth. You've joined them. That's not following your arrow. That's letting your arrow go somewhere else. So in the, in the song, it says, say what you think, love what you love, because you only get so many trips around the sun. You only live once. Now, I'm not going to go into reincarnation and whether you live once or not, but we all know this is a one-time deal. This particular birth to death is this one-time deal. Okay, so you don't have to talk to me about reincarnation after this talk, because um, whether it happens or not, whatever. This birth to death, this, as they say in West Side Story, <laughs> this womb to tomb is what I'm talking about. That's from West Side Story, just in case you didn't know. Riff says to Tony, sperm to worm. Tony says to Riff, womb to tomb. You didn't need to know that. So, so... On this one time around, every single one of us gets to use our mind to create a better life for ourselves. Yes? yes. That's why you're sitting here. Even if you're only sitting here because someone dragged you here, you're still sitting here to hear this. We have the most powerful tool we could ever use. It's called our mind. It will change everything if we pay attention to it. And if we take the initiative and the action to put in there what we want in there. Have you ever tried to put... Uh, regular gas into a diesel car? You can't. The car is ruined. You have to get rid of the car. Well, how many of you think, how many of us are still putting diesel into this mind that only takes supreme divine gas? <laughs> it's what we do. We put the wrong things into that, which would operate brilliantly if we just put in there what we knew to put in there, which is the spiritual truth. So, Science of mind does not tell you what to think. It shows you how to do whatever you decide to do. So the arrow. I want to talk to you about the creative process, believe it or not. So if I look at the arrow, just take the bow and arrow that you're using, right? So what is the arrow? Well, the arrow comes into play in the creative process. But first you have to look at, and not even the bow. Be, the bow uses the arrow. But behind the bow is Sean Scanlon. 
He is the person that picks up the bow, the mind, and decides something, picks up an arrow, and then shoots it. Yes? That's the creative process. That which thinks decides what it's going to do, and because the law of cause and effect always says yes, you know, the arrow always goes, always goes where you point it. You can't do this and let go and it land over there because you've decided you'd rather it be over there, but you're still pointing this way, such as, I really want prosperity, but lack is really my, this is who I am, I'm lack, but I want prosperity, it's over there, boing, it didn't go there. It went from me to where it landed. Lack. If you want prosperity, pivot in mind and aim it that way. Make sense? That's what your mind is doing all the time. You are flinging arrows left and right every moment of your day. So there's you, the person behind the bow. There's the bow, which is the law that is always going to take what you give it, put it exactly where you put it, and then there's the arrow. Now, the arrow is an interesting thing because the arrow is here, right? The arrow is the thought in your mind that you're going to fling into the world, yes? But the arrow is also landing out there, isn't it? So if any of you ever have had a problem with this idea of I have to be equal to it in my mind or the mental equivalent, there's the perfect example. The arrow is here and the arrow lands there. Same arrow. The exact same arrow. What's in my mind shows up in form because that's the way it works. Make sense? Some people, t it takes two years to teach this. <laughs> so, but when I heard this song, and I have to thank Delaney for that, because when I heard this song, I was like, oh my God, it's the creative process, really. So, so now, one of you may say to me, <clears throat> elements. You know, what do you do about the elements? Because I can just, I always hear the Craig Lincolns in my head that are gonna say to me, lovely, to lovely, I love that, great. What happens when a windstorm comes along? Your theory's shot to hell. <laughs> Wouldn't you say that? I would have never said that. <laughs> but in so many words. But in so many words, yes. So I could shoot it. Will it really land there if a windstorm comes along and, and screws up with the arrow? What do you think, yes or no? Yeah, What'd you say? It'll still land. It'll still land, but, but in order, for, in order for it, these are really lively. In order for it to be a mental equivalent, this must land perfectly at that. They have to be equal. So the elements can't throw it off. But what are some of the elements that could throw it off? Disbelief, fear, doubt, uncertainty. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm just too. So many things, so many things can be the element that throws that arrow off. However, remember the process. The process works this way. That which is behind everything is perfect. When I am in my God self, I am perfect. There is that in me. I am, I am the Google map ex ex expanded. I am, 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 what's that called, that thing, Siri. I am Siri, <laughs> perfected. So there's no way I can give you wrong advice. I will always guide you to the highest and best so that when I stand in my position as that and I am pulling that arrow, I don't care if a, if a tsunami comes along, that arrow will always land exactly where it's meant. And I will use the exact amount of force that's necessary. I'll make whatever adjustments need to be made because I cannot do anything other than shoot perfectly straight and land it right there. And if we knew that about the elements in our life, if we really knew that nothing can throw me, nothing can push me off of my mark, Nothing can stop me from accomplishing what I set out to accomplish. If we knew that and stopped paying so much time, oh my God, it's a tsunami. I guess what I'm gonna have to do is, well, maybe I shouldn't play today. Maybe I shouldn't even bother today because this, this, you know. No, what if we just stood in our certainty and said, no, I know who I am. Watch, and so it is. That's how this teaching works. And that's the greatest gift we can give ourselves to know that. Get out of the relative world. Forget about all the elements that can change things. But notice them. Notice them when they're happening. You have to. You have to notice when you're afraid so that you can handle it. You can deal with it from the truth.
You can't just go through life pretending because guess what? The universe is not answering, is not reacting based on what you're telling it. It's reacting based on what you really believe. You can fool a lot of people. You can even fool yourself. You can't fool the universal law of life because it will always, always, always land your mark exactly where it came from. So it's up to you to know where it's coming from. So the title of my talk today is Follow Your Arrow and Soar. So the soar part of this is where celebrate comes in. Soar equals celebrate. You know, if we're too focused on the target, how many of you have ever tried, how many of you have ever shot an arrow? Have done archery? Okay, so most of us have had to do this. I guess you were in the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts. So if you're worried about the elements while you're letting go, you, have to, you haven't really let go. So the whole point is letting go. You're getting into it. You're allowing, you know who you are, and you have to let go. That's the release part of treatment. You have to let go. Have you ever tried to shoot an arrow and you're not sure if you're ready yet, and you kind of let go and something really weird happens? Well, I was in the Boy Scouts for a short period of time. Never made it to Eagle, but I did have to go through that archery thing, and I was scared to death, because I thought, kids, arrows, all in one area, not, not safe. And so, but everybody seemed to be doing it pretty well until I grabbed the arrow. And I got up, and I still remember this leg in front of me, and I took this arrow, and I'm really afraid, and I'm like, and they're t- talking me through it, and there's the, there's the target, and I'm like so focused on the target, and what did they say about this, and is the bow this, is it this, and I'm like trying to figure it out, and they're talking to me, and there's so much hubbub, and people are yelling, go, Jimmy, and I'm like, and I just, I let it go sort of, but I also let go of this at the same time of this, and the arrow went boom right into the ground, like that close to my foot. And I just remember that moment. I was like, I'm done, I am done. <laughs> the Girl Scouts don't have to do this. <laughs> so, so that's what happens in our minds so often. We're there shooting the arrow, but we're paying attention to the target. We're thinking about, well, oh, last time I did this, what happened? And oh my God, people are gonna think I'm stupid and all that stuff. And then we're not really letting go. We're still holding on because we're afraid. And so the, I said, do you ever do this and let go and the arrow just does this? I love, I love that time. Yeah, when you just, you're, you're sort of holding it, but you let go of this and the arrow, you still got this and it's like, and everybody's like, wow. So your job is to let go. You know why you don't let go easily? Because you don't know who you are. When you are really certain of who you are, you just let go and then... It just happens. You just allow it to happen, no matter what it is. So I wrote this little thing for everybody to take today. Um, Don't sweat it, celebrate it. When you find yourself sweating something and getting intense about something, you should write that down somewhere. Don't sweat it, celebrate it. Because celebration is really letting go. When you're celebrating something, you've let it go. Why do you think the last step of treatment, well, it's not, it's thank you. The fourth step of treatment is thank you. It's so that you can let it go. When I say thank you, I have it, I'm done. Thank you, let it go. So don't sweat it, celebrate it. Mary Madden Morrissey said this, have you ever struggled to find work or love only to find them after you have given up? (laughs) This is the paradox of letting go. Life is so much easier than we make it out to be. Life is so much simpler if we would just know who we were, let go, grab our mind, Take that mind, stretch out, make lots of noise, as Del sang, kiss lots of boys or girls, if that's what you're into, whatever it is, love that line, right? Just stand in your truth as the very presence of God, but then the last thing is, you have to celebrate it, which means let go. And then once you let go, watch how those arrows land perfectly on success love, prosperity, creative expression, all the things you want in life, it's right there because it's right here. It will show up if you just sling your arrow exactly where you want it to go, leave nothing for randomness, and just have at it. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.